morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. My name is Alexis Kleiman, and I'm the chair of Next Niagara. On behalf of the entire council, I'd like to welcome you to Engage 2022. Thank you for joining us here today. For those who are newly engaging with Next Niagara, we are an advisory council of the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce. Our mission is to amplify the voice of the next generation here in Niagara. We do that through professional and personal development opportunities, advocacy, and events just like this one here today. I'm going to throw it to our vice chair, Kristen Nelson, to begin our time together with a land acknowledgement. Thank you, Alexis. We want to begin this event by acknowledging that the land on which many of us are gathered on today is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. We recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this place and know that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and contributions of Indigenous peoples. We recognize the contribution of Métis, Inuit, and other Indigenous peoples in shaping and strengthening this region, the province, and the country. If you're joining us from outside the Niagara region today, we encourage you to research the traditional lands that you are on through websites like nativeland.ca. Thank you, Kristen. We'd also like to thank our sponsors for powering this event and making this event possible here today. Thank you to our title sponsors, Niagara Economic Development and DDL and Co, our main stage presenter, Niagara Community Foundation, and the other sponsors who made today possible, including RBC Royal Bank, Niagara College Canada, CAA Niagara, 610 CKTB, King Events, and Move 105.7. We would also like to thank the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce for providing us with this platform and give a special shout out to our Next Niagara event subcommittee for all of their efforts in planning this event here today. We'd also like to acknowledge, while we begin, all of our speakers for lending their time and expertise to this event. We truly appreciate you spending your morning with us and providing us with inspiration and new knowledge. So before we jump into the programming, we just want to review a few housekeeping items uh, to make the morning as enriching as possible for you. So hopefully above my head, you can see uh, some navigation links, um, but know that you can click on the lobby at any time to access all the functionalities of the event platform. So we're currently in the main stage. This is where our keynote will take place as well as our real talk panel. Those are happening one right after the other, so you can stay here for a little bit before you have to move on. Um, once we're done with the panel, we will move out to the breakout rooms where you can access all of our uh, speakers and know that closing remarks will take place in the breakout sessions. We have the agenda, so you can hop in there and review it at any point throughout the event, check the session times, tailor your day. Just to note that we will have a 30 minute break after our first breakout session. So you can check some emails, take a break from your workspace, get a refreshment, um, and then we'll start back up at 1130. So again, just hop into the agenda to make sure you know where you wanna be when. You can learn more about our sessions and speakers in those tabs. And as I mentioned, when we're in the breakout room sessions, you'll be using the breakout room tabs. Just click on the click join session for the session you want to attend and a Zoom link will open up. If there's something that you're going to miss, all of the sessions are recorded, so we'll be emailing them to everyone next week. You can learn all about the sponsors that Alexis mentioned in the sponsors tab. And then hopefully most importantly, just a reminder that since this is a hybrid event, we're in our virtual component right now, we do have our in-person social taking place this evening at Ironwood and tickets are still available for that portion. So we'd love to see you come out and network. There'll be entertainment, refreshments, an opportunity to get headshots to update your professional profile. Um, so just click on the register for 2022 um, tab at any point throughout the day to join us. Um, you can learn a little bit more about the vendors who will be at our in-person session through the Marketplace tab. And lastly, um, if you want to be featured on our social wall, um, you can post about your conference experience by tagging us at Next Niagara to participate. We'd love to see how the day is going for everybody. Thank you for that great overview, Kristen. I do hope that everyone will explore our event platform and before we jump into our very exciting keynote, I would like to play a video by our title sponsors, Niagara Economic Development and DDL and Co.
If you're joining us first thing here this morning, this is likely the moment you've been waiting for. I am excited to introduce you to our keynote speaker, Laura Whaley, who you may know as your work bestie from Instagram or TikTok. Upon graduating in university with a degree in business in 2016, Laura started her career in the corporate world. She has always been a creative individual and directed this creativity into various outlets over the years. One of those outlets became making videos in early 2020 that poked fun in the corporate world, bringing to light experiences that many could relate to in their own working lives. Over the last year and a half, she has built a community of over 1.7 million work besties on TikTok and over 1.3 on Instagram. Her content has evolved over time, touching on many work-related topics, including what it can really be like to work from home or how to professionally say things we often think in the workplace as well as a topic she's very passionate about and here to talk to us today about, which is professional boundaries. Welcome, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. You know, what a lovely introduction. It's always nice to be introduced by someone else. I don't know if you've ever been in that situation at work where, you know, you're told, can, can we go around the room and introduce ourselves, you know, state what we do at the company and a little fun fact. And I always cringe in those moments. My anxiety is just uber heightened. I panic. I'm like, well, I don't know what I do in this company anymore. What a fun fact about me. I have none. Um, so thank you for that lovely introduction and thank you for having me here today. You know, I'm really excited to speak about um, something I'm quite passionate about, professional boundaries, something that I've been navigating through my career when I first started up until today. And I will remain to navigate this um, throughout my entire journey. So, you know, why did I start speaking about professional boundaries? I mean, we touched on it a little bit in the introduction, but TikTok is really where it kind of had its start. Um, so if we go to the slide with the picture, yeah, perfect. The next one. Yep. Here we go. Okay. Where it all started. We're good. We're golden. We're rocking and rolling now. All right. So, um, I had a series go viral on TikTok about, you know, the coworker who doesn't understand boundaries and you know what, let's take a look at a video if you haven't seen them for yourself. If you work on this through the weekend, you should be able to get it done by Monday. While I'm unable to work this weekend, I will ensure this gets prioritized during my working hours. Why can't you work this weekend? I work through the weekends all the time. I was unaware that overtime was available this weekend, but for future reference, where should I bill those hours? When you joined this team, I thought you said you worked hard. Yes, I said I was a hard worker. Not that I would sacrifice my personal time for this job. To you to live. So in these videos, you know, yes, they're a little bit sassy. Um, there's always a boundary that's reinstated in the video. But the really cool thing about these videos is they reach people from all around the world and they create such amazing conversation in the comment section. You know, people talking about their experiences with boundaries, people maybe disagreeing or agreeing with a boundary. Um, and that's really what started me speaking about my journey with professional boundaries, how I view them, how I kind of go about defining them, um, setting them and establishing them and all of that. And that's what I'm here to speak with you about today. So getting into the agenda a little bit, we're going to touch on what are boundaries, what are professional boundaries, you know, what, why should I set them in my, in my career? Um, setting professional boundaries all the way from figuring out what on earth kind of boundary do I need to set all the way to implementing it and maintaining it. Um, we're going to touch too on effective communication because it's incredibly important when we talk about boundaries, especially within our careers. And then we'll have a little bit of time at the end for some Q and A. So what are boundaries? Um, a very, you know, textbook definition. It's the practice of openly communicating and asserting values in order to reserve or protect against having them compromised. You know, that definition is giving me dictionary. So another one that more resonates with me is rules and guidelines we implement that tell others how we'd like to be treated. And when we implement this into our professional lives, limits and rules that we set between our professional and personal lives to ensure that the line between employer, our job, our work, and ourself, our employee, like our employee um, doesn't get blurred, you know, and, and why should we set boundaries? Um, so again, it's all about not having that line blurred, maintaining that healthy relationship between our personal and professional lives. You know, it can help improve our work life structure. We often hear people talk about work life balance. Does it exist? Sure, maybe, but it looks wildly different for everyone. And in implementing and understanding our boundaries, we create a much better work life structure for ourselves. Um, work-life integration and all of that reduces, you know, frustration, resentment, reduces stress, um, helps us stay in control. You know, when we have boundaries in place, we start to define our own rules. Uh, it gives us a lot more of sense of control, reduces speed of burnout. You know, I always say 
I have yet to meet anyone in their career that doesn't have burnout. I think it's inevitable. Um, but I also don't think burnout is a sign of failure. It doesn't mean you failed at all. It's to me, when I reach burnout, it's my kind of notice to go, okay, Laura, take a step back. What do you need right now? How are your boundaries? Um, and so that boundaries plays a huge part into, you know, my journey with burnout. Um, it helps improves our ability to self care, building confidence, sets clear expectations with ourselves, with our employees, with our families, with everyone in our lives. Um, and a huge one here, especially as young professionals. So we don't adopt boundaries, you know, defining our own doesn't allow us to take on the boundaries or lack thereof of those around us as we enter the workforce. It's really, really easy and common to take on what our managers do, our bosses' bosses. You know, we see them working on a weekend and suddenly we go, should I be checking my emails on the weekend? Um, and so that's what we want to avoid with taking a look at our own, our own boundaries here. And a note on that is not everyone's boundaries will look the same. And I really can't emphasize that enough is there is no right or wrong when it comes to boundaries. It's what's right for you and what not, might not resonate with you. So as we start to look at setting professional boundaries, there's three buckets that I find very helpful in doing this. One, we want to establish the boundary. What is the boundary we're looking to implement? We want to implement it, putting it into practice, and then we want to maintain it. We want to reinforce it. So getting into the establishing piece of professional boundaries, just some tips and tricks and notes here. Like I said earlier, your manager's boundaries do not need to define your own. So take away everyone else around you in your working life and their boundaries and how they operate. Get that out of your brain when you start to really think about what do I want to establish as a boundary for me? What makes sense for me? Um, and we often aren't aware of a boundary until it's been violated. And it's a really, really important thing to note as we navigate within our careers. If something happens and comes up and makes us feel, it gives us the ick, if you will. Note that down because likely there's a boundary that needs to be set in place there that's not currently in practice. Um, your boundaries will change with every season of your life. You know, it's not, okay, these are the boundaries I'm gonna establish today that make sense for me and then I'm never gonna look at them again. Um, you need to reevaluate them and they're gonna change and they're gonna move a lot through each season of life. You know, how you feel in a certain situation can be an indicator of what boundaries you need to set, um, similar to the not being aware of the boundary until it's been violated. So. Moving on to um, the self-assessment piece, which is a huge thing for me when I'm establishing my own professional boundaries. It's figuring out, you know, what are my current life priorities? How do I define success in my professional life? What are my career goals? What do I value in a job? And what are my non-negotiables? And as we start to answer these questions, we learn more about how work makes sense in our lives, how we'd like work structure to exist within our entire um, life. And Another practice that I have found very valuable is asking yourself how I want to work. Asking yourself, you know, how does work look like in my entire life? And so moving to the next slide, um, we often, as we grow up, we get asked all the time, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to be and all that? But we never really take a step back to say, how do I want to work when I grow up, you know? How many hours a day am I looking to work? What, what kind of environment? Remove the job from it and just think about work in general and the structure of that. You know, What kind of relationship do I wanna have with my colleagues? How digitally connected am I? Um, how many breaks am I taking throughout the day? Is travel a big part of a working life that I see for me or not? Asking ourselves these questions will give us a much better idea of how our work life ideally likes to be structured and then we can start to see in there oh hey boundaries might need to be placed in certain areas depending on my own needs so there's six major buckets that i look at when i'm setting my professional boundaries technology especially in today's working world we're all so digitally connected working from home it's even increased that so boundaries surrounding technology boundaries surrounding working time so think of that as, you know, the, the time you sign into work to the time you sign out, the time that goes, that happens during that, how do you manage it? How do you prioritize it? Um, working relationships. So with your managers, with your coworkers, what boundaries need to be set within that? 
Uh, and physical boundaries, this all comes down to your physical needs. You know, how can I be comfortable physically while I am working at the job? What do I need in that element? Um, and then there's personal time and space. So we're setting professional boundaries in our personal time and space. And we'll touch on a little bit more on all these buckets uh, moving forward. Um, and then the last one is mental and emotional boundaries. And that plays a lot into mental health here. So how does work play into my identity, my mental health, my worth, um, and all that. So when we look at technology, um, these are just some examples of possible boundaries. And you can read these and you could be like, nope, doesn't make sense for me, not for me. And that's fine. You might see some of these that resonate with you a little bit more, and that's cool too. Um, but just giving some examples of how this could possibly look. So not having work on your personal phone. You know, maybe you just say, if I need a work phone, great, but it's going to be a separate phone than I have personally, and that's how I'd like to engage. Um, silencing notifications. You know, we're constantly getting notifications all day, every day. And for me, it's incredibly distracting when I'm getting all these beeps and everything coming through. So for me, I silence notifications. Um, logging off and shutting down at the end of the day, you know, use it, utilizing your online statuses, do not disturb when you're trying to have focus time. So it's stuff like that. Um, limiting time on social media. I do want to touch on this one because I guarantee someone out there right now is on their phone and that's fine. I'm not offended. Um, but we tend to use our phones quite a bit in our working lives and they do aid in procrastination. I, I will give them that. Um, but sometimes it becomes quite a disturbance and it's not so much used as a break, but it's taking up a lot of time in our working hours. And so limiting use of social media, even though that's a personal you know, engagement with technology, it is existing in our working time. Um, so being mindful of things like that too when we look at technology and boundaries there. So the next bucket, mm. Working time. So the time you log on to the time you sign off. Setting working hours. That's always been a big one for me. I sign off on at the same time every day. I sign off at the same time every day. And that's a boundary that I've had in place for years. Um, it also touches on things like prioritizing your workload. You know, we get constantly people, can I have this? Can I have this? I need your attention. I need your attention. And the thing with that is that's great. And we want to help our coworkers. We really do. And we will. But prioritizing our own workload allows us to, you know, engage in the activities in which we were hired to do and then supporting the, our coworkers where it makes sense for us. So maybe a boundary surrounding that, you know, blocking out focus time in your calendar. Um, a big one for me is checking emails during a certain time window instead of constantly monitoring, monitoring them all day. That's a boundary I've set in place for myself. It aids in my productivity and my pro focus. Um, and so you, you kind of have to figure out what works for you um, and set the boundary around that. But these are some examples within working time. Um, and then moving on to our next bucket, so personal time and space. This one could be a little bit tricky. So dedicated workspace when working from home. And this is a big one, especially from those of us that you know have been working from home the last few years, those of us that will continue to into the future. When I am at home, this is my working space. Work does not follow me to the kitchen. It does not follow me into the bedroom. It does not follow me onto the couch. This is my working space. You know, and that's a boundary I've set in place for myself to be able to mentally compart. Like, I don't want work taking up my entire personal space, but I do really like working from home. So this allows me to be able to keep that separation. Um, not working during vacations, no work talk at the dinner table, not answering work calls on your time off, all kind of things surrounding that. And then our next bucket here, I believe, is working relationships. So you need to figure out how you want to engage when it comes to your coworkers, when it comes to your managers. Maybe you don't want coworkers on social media. You don't want to be sharing personal information at work. And so you need to set boundaries and rules in place for that. Um, rules of contact, maybe you have a coworker who is constantly DMing you or texting you. And you're like, you know, I do not want to engage on my personal platforms um, in a working relationship. So maybe that's a boundary that you need to set too. Um, reducing contact with negative employees while remaining professional. This one I get asked a lot is I have this toxic coworker and, you know, I, I don't know how to engage with them. And you can set a boundary there, which basically just means you will engage with this person at the bare minimum you need to in order to successfully complete your job, but nothing beyond that. And that's a boundary that I found really impactful, very powerful to put in play with myself when it comes to dealing with people that are more negative or more toxic to me. Um, 
And then we get into the physical, you know, boundaries. And these are all things like taking breaks, having a proper lunch, you know, refusing to work under unsafe circumstances, um, having an ergonomic office setup. So not allowing work to let the physical body basically suffer throughout the day. And that's um, pretty straightforward. So you need to figure out what, what that looks like for you, what you physically need throughout those working hours in the day, and then create boundaries based on that. And then our last bucket here, um, this is the mental and emotional. And this is one I'm extremely passionate about. Um, and this all really comes down to our mental health. So the practice of mentally disconnecting in off hours is much easier said than done. Don't get me wrong. But when you close your laptop at the end of the day, are you still thinking about work? You know, and I often tell people, it's not really a break if you're still thinking about work. And then some people are like, well, in that logic, I haven't taken a break in eight years. And it's like, that might be something that you need to sort of reevaluate because we do need breaks from work. How are we supposed to show up for our job and give it all that we have if we're not focusing ourselves, if we're just letting every other piece of ourselves just start to, you know, disintegrate over time. So setting these mental and emotional barriers um, is, is really important. Separating self-worth from work is also another one that I've had in practice for many years. It's very powerful for me. It might not work for you, um, but it's this idea that work is what I do. Work is not who I am. And I've had this in practice for years, um, and I'm going to tell you why. If I get fired tomorrow from my job, it would be, you know, very upsetting and financially I'd have to figure it out and I'm going through all these emotions. But if my identity, if my self-worth is so tied to that job, I didn't just lose a job. I lost a piece of myself. And that is so difficult to fill the void of and start to build that back up. So that's a boundary that I, it's one of my non-negotiables, if you will. Um, prioritizing mental health, giving yourself permission to say no, and all of those kind of things that, that um, help keep and protect our emotional and mental well-being. All right, so we've got, you know, some boundaries, hopefully. We're starting to think of things that, you know, yes, those make sense for us and, and we can um, integrate these into life. When it comes to implementing, I always like to, you know, okay, I established this boundary. I want to set this into place. I'm going to apply a primary imp implementation method to it, whether that's communication or action. You know, for example, if I am really dedicated to signing off at five o'clock every day, that's going to be done through action. That's my primary method there. I'm doing it. I'm signing off every day at five o'clock. If it's more in you know, saying no to certain things or when your workload is so busy that you can't take anything else on, that's communication. So just figuring out what makes sense for you there. Setting boundaries early. It is a lot easier to set and maintain a boundary if you do it early on in your job. Um, and that's because coworkers respect action over time. They start to learn how you'd like to be treated. And that's really what we're doing through boundaries is we're teaching people how we want to be treated. So if I'm trying to set this boundary, if I sign off every day at five o'clock and then on Tuesday, I'm like, well, oh, you know, I could work till six. And my coworker is like, ah, oh, hey, can you 530 have a meeting? Yeah, yeah, okay, I can make that work. And you have this boundary, but you're not making action on it and you're not constantly reinforcing it. People aren't gonna really respect that boundary over time because it's not really in play. It's kind of a when you pick and choose to have it. You know, so setting them early will help create expectation management, which is a huge thing when it comes to setting boundaries. Um, and I will say setting the boundary is your responsibility. Respecting it and supporting it, however, is the responsibility of your employer, your manager, and your coworkers. So moving to the next slide here, um, effective communication is truly at the core of setting boundaries. And I will give you a couple things to keep in mind as we're communicating boundaries. Communicate in real time. You know, if I'm getting a meeting invite at 5.30 and my boundaries, I'm working till five, you communicated that at the time. You don't you accept the meeting invite, go, and then a week later say, hey, oh, by the way, I know last week we had this meeting, but um, I, don't, I don't work past five. It doesn't really work that way. You need to communicate in real time when the boundary gets crossed. Keep it professional. You know, at the end of the day, this is our job. 
Um, it is a professional environment. We need to communicate in a professional manner. There is a very respectful way that we can communicate our boundaries and, and we need to sort of be mindful of that um, as we're communicating um, the boundary. I always say educate and remind versus go into defense. So coworkers are gonna forget your boundaries sometimes. It's not their responsibility to memorize them. Um, and instead of going into this defensive mode, remind and educate them. So an example here is, you know, thank you for circulating this meeting invite. I'm unable to attend as my working hours are eight to five. So reinstating kind of the boundary of your working hours. I will keep an eye out for the meeting minute. So you're offering kind of a solution for that um, versus I've told you numerous times, I don't work evening, so I'm not attending. You know, there's a huge difference when we talk about communication there and how it's received. Um, and another big thing when it comes to communicating boundaries is excuses versus refusal. So if you are, you know, invited to this 530 meeting and you're like, oh, I can't stay late today because I have to pick up my dog from the vet or because I have this appointment or because I have this, that's translated to the coworker as, well, she just can't attend today. But if I send her 530 meeting requests in the future, it's fine. Versus my workday finishes at five and I don't work in the evenings. It's letting them know what your boundary is and without an excuse tied to it, right? It's quite powerful. Um, to include within your, your communication there. All right, so maintaining your boundaries. Again, I'm gonna talk about it till it's dead. Communicate, 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 it's key. Action, repetition helps build respect over time. It helps teach people how we'd like to be treated. Um, acting like the person you wanna become. So it is very challenging to set boundaries. You know, It can be really challenging to say no, to start speaking up for yourself, to implement these things. But you got to just keep telling yourself, okay, I'm acting like the person I'd like to become. And then one day you're like, I'm here. I've become her. And then you take a moment and you're like, I am so proud of myself for this. But it does take time. It does take repetition. Um, another tool you could use is discussing your boundaries. So, you know, if you're starting working on a new team with new people, ask people, you know, what are your communication boundaries here? How do you like to be communicated with? Um, are you available after hours? Are you? And it opens up dialogue and then you can kind of communicate your boundaries back. Another big thing here is creating structures structures that support your boundaries. So again, in the example of not working outside of your working hours, if you're noticing that you're trying to communicate things, you're struggling a little bit, and you really want you know, another layer of additional support, maybe set an out of office outside of your working hours that basically remind people of, yep, my working hours are X time to X time, and that is when you can expect a response from me. You know, something as simple as that. Um, can be quite effective when you are maintaining your boundaries. Okay, so what to do when a boundary is crossed. So big four things here I, I would strongly encourage um, is you don't need to spend time validating or explaining your boundary. You don't need to say why you have it in place. Stating it is enough. You know, I don't work on the weekends. You know, it's, it's not I don't work on the weekends because I have this going on and this going on and this. Go I don't work on the weekends is enough. Don't take it personally. I think oftentimes um, we get so caught up in our own stuff and our coworkers are just as much caught up in their own stuff and they'll forget, they'll slip up. Sometimes they'll push boundaries a little bit, um, but try not to take it personally. You know, communication's key in this. I'm sorry, I'm unable to assist with that workload this weekend as I will not be working and that's enough. Um, I understand with boundaries that, especially within our professional lives, is we're gonna have to make exceptions. You know, we're paying the bills at the end of the day and exceptions are, they're kind of inevitable in, in certain boundaries, I will say. Um, but that's okay. As long as you understand that that is the exception and not the rule. And you need to communicate that as well. You know, if someone is asking you to work on the weekend um, and it's an absolute emergency, like a real emergency this time, and you know, you're gonna assist. You could say something like, I don't typically work weekends, so you're restating your boundary there, um, but given this is an emergency, I'm willing to assist. And then the last one here is just offer an alternative sometimes when a boundary gets crossed there. So in this example here, you know, I'm unable to work on the weekend, restate your boundary, but I can prioritize this first thing on Monday. You know, offering that will help over time just make things a little bit easier um, and different tools there to, to implement when the boundaries do get crossed. this slide all right so this i want you to think about boundaries once you have 
you know, you start to get some boundaries in your head of things that you want to set. We need to look at a holistic view of our professional lives. There's three main buckets here. Your professional boundaries. So basically your guiding principles and rules that you're going to be setting for your professional life. Okay. Your career goals. You know, what are my career goals? How do I define success? And then your employer's definition of success. And this is a big one here. So what is the company value? What behaviors do they reward? Um, what traits do high performers in the company have? Um, you know, and it's really important here to start to understand if I have a boundary that says I'm not working past five o'clock, you know, I, I log off at the end of the day at five o'clock every day. I'm going to keep going back to that boundary. And your career goal says, I want to be at a management position within a year. Great. Love that for you. So fun. You can totally do that. But then your employer's definition of success is hard work equals working overtime. Hard work equals no work-life separation. Um, they're only promoting people at the company that are working around the clock. That boundary might be aligned with your goals because you can absolutely work hard given your allotted time of, of working. But your employer has a very different definition of success than you do. And so that might be something that you need to look at and say, okay, if that is truly my career goals, am I at the right employer? Or are there other boundaries here that make more sense to be able to implement in, in this career, this employer that I'm working for here? And so that's always a good spot check that I like to do. Um, once I do have the boundaries I'd like to put in place, just kind of validating them against my own career goals. And then also the employer that I work for, do they make sense? Is it going to be supported and respected or... Is this going to end up being a huge friction point between me and, and my coworkers? Oh, strong boundaries create strong employees. I believe that so wholeheartedly. And when we think about boundaries, I don't want you to think, you know, it's me first. It's always me first, me first in front of the employer. No, 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 no. It's me also. You know, work takes up so much of our lives. It really does at the end of the day. And if you are not looking out for yourself, if you're not even considering what you need um, in this life, in this, in this working environment, it's, gonna, it's not going to end well. I can tell you that. You're going to hit a nice burnout. You're going to lose sense of identity. You're going to get so intertwined with this job that it's just going to take over everything. There will be no separation. Um, so when we think about boundaries, don't think about me first, but it's just me also. What do I need? Being in control of your life, especially in your working world, leads to a greater sense of control in your professional life. Yeah, goes hand in hand. We have control in our professional life. We feel a little more control in our personal life. We set boundaries in our professional life. We start to set more in our personal life. Um, showing up for yourself allows you to show up for work. You know, if I'm not filling up my cup, I have nothing to pour from. I am not able to show up every day for work and be super productive and give it my all because not every day we're going to feel great showing up for work, but at least if we're taking care of ourselves, we can kind of lessen the amount of days that we show up and we just do not feel like working today. You know, um, it helps us strengthen relationships. As we start to implement our own boundaries, we start to respect the boundaries of those around us a little bit more too. So that can actually help strengthen relationships at work. It improves confidence and communication skills. Saying no can be incredibly challenging. You know, I know that. Um, but over time, as we practice, it builds up this confidence. And Confidence and communication skills are incredibly powerful within your professional life. So as you develop these boundaries over time, you're actually developing a lot of these soft skills, which is incredibly powerful. Um, and you'll carry them throughout your entire career. So a couple finishing notes. In saying no to something, so setting a boundary, you are saying yes to something else. No, I cannot work this evening. You're saying yes to doing something in your personal life, hanging out with your family, walking your dogs. You know, it's not just saying no, 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 no. When we say no, we say yes when it comes to boundaries. Uh, professional boundaries help define and maintain your work life structure. They really, really do. Over time, you know, if you don't have these boundaries in place, you'll just start to adopt all these things that people tell you. You should be working like this. This is how it should operate within your professional life. You lose this entire sense of, control, you know, and you start to get all of these things that make no sense for you. 
you start to have all these boundaries that really never resonated with you in the first place. Um, so it does help maintain your own work life structure that you are in control of that makes sense for you. Self discovery and self awareness are really, really the key um, for establishing your own boundaries for figuring out what you need. And I really do encourage you to check in with yourself through every season of life. You know, a couple years into my career, I started to lose who I was. I was like, okay, I know I'm working all the time and that's great. And I really do enjoy my job, but like, I don't know who I am. If I were to introduce myself to someone I met tomorrow, I don't know if I could do that without telling them what I do for work because I, I don't know. So what I ended up doing, I, I won't tell you the whole story because it's too long, but I spent a year preparing to take a couple months off of an unpaid leave. And in that time, I took a step back to figure out one, who I was, what I wanted, what working life and professional life meant for me, how a career kind of fit into my entire world and how I wanted to approach that moving forward. Um, and that was, you know, a huge pivotal moment for me in my career. Um, but I just, I just urge you to check in with yourself through every season of life and never stop asking yourself, like, who, who are you? You know, figuring out more about yourself is something that we should all continue to do throughout life. So with that said, um, that's what I had for you today. And, and if there's any questions, we can jump into that now. I don't know how much time we have left. Yeah, thank you so much, Laura. We do have time for a few questions. Um, but do just want to thank you before we move into them as people are throwing those in the chat. Really appreciate how candid you were and uh, the way that you structured your presentation to include scenarios and examples that, you know, could, again, the nature of your delivery style resonate with people. So thank you so much for that awesome presentation. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. This is such a treat to be able to talk about something that I am so passionate about with such a great audience. Oh, fantastic. Well, we, we feel your passion through the screen. Um, so, you know, you talk about boundaries changing in every season of life. Mm -hmm. And for many who are returning back to the office, um, they may not have had some boundaries in place. Now, you know, they've been mm -hmm. working from home for a couple of years, maybe in a different season of life than they were pre-pandemic. You know, what strategies or recommendations would you have for them as they're re-entering the office with the same coworkers um, that mm -hmm. they've been with virtually, how do they reinforce those new boundaries they may have? Yeah, so I, you know, I would start off with saying, when we think about going back to the office, we often think about going back in time. And the reality is we're never going back to a pre-pandemic normal. We are shaping a new normal moving forward. So it really is the perfect time to start implementing new boundaries because it's new for everyone. You know, and I think that we get caught up thinking like, okay, well, things were like this when we were in the office before. So I guess it's going to have to be like that again. It absolutely does not. So now is a really, really good time to figure out what you need in the office, start putting these things into practice um, because you are shaping your new normal. Yeah, what a what a great response. Uh, and I completely agree. It, it is this chance to uh, re-enter in a, in a way that is new. We are entering into this new space. We're not going backwards. So love that future thinking approach. Um, and you reviewed your establish, implement, and maintain, you know, approach to setting professional boundaries. And I'm wondering, how can we support our colleagues and using that approach and sticking and, and reinforcing their professional boundaries? Yeah, so I think as the role of a coworker, we need to encourage our coworkers to define their own boundaries. We, it is not our responsibility to define and tell people what boundaries that they need to set because we are all incredibly different with our needs. I would say communication there is key. So once a coworker comes to you and they have a boundary set, it's your responsibility to support it how they need it to be supported, you know, depending on what the boundary is. Um, and so I would say, don't take on any bit of the trying to tell the coworker or, you know, define their boundary for them. Um, it really is up to them to communicate that. And then you respect it. You support it where it makes sense. If, you know, you have hesitations, if it's a boundary that, you know, is a little bit trickier to, to support, um, have that conversation with them, open dialogue. At the end of the day, we're all human. We're just doing the best that we can. And so engaging in that dialogue with them is quite powerful. Yeah, fantastic. Um, love that kind of ally, like in the workplace relationship, you know, not necessarily telling or, but, you know, guiding and supporting along that, mm -hmm. that way. Um, so to kind of take it back to the first bit of your presentation, when you were talking about TikTok and talking about um, how you went viral, 
Um, just kind of wondering what was going through your mind at that time when you, you know, decided to make your first, your first video and, um, what were your expectations around putting it out there? I know you've said you've, you've always been a creative person, so I'm yeah. sure there's been many, uh, different outlets throughout the, the journey, but, uh, yeah. just bring it there. Yeah. So let's go way back. So when I first started on TikTok, I had like 20 followers, you know, I didn't really use the app. I didn't think much of it we just transitioned to working from home and I'm like, wow, this is weird. I am so isolated. I don't have my work bestie next to me to be like, Hey, do you see what happened? And so I turned to like TikTok as a creative outlet to put some of the things I was experiencing into video form for my own entertainment. Let's get real. I was so bored at home and <laughs> I didn't think anyone would see them. I really didn't when I first started posting. And then people started following along. People started commenting. Some videos started going viral and so many people were like, wow, I thought I was the only one experiencing this. And that to me was really what kept me going with it um, because the last couple of years have been so lonely. And so to even open up a silly little video and be able to be like, oh my gosh, it's not just me is the most rewarding piece of this whole TikTok thing. So it was a crazy experience when things started to blow up and when things started to to grow and my coworkers like, oh, I saw a video from you. My manager's like, and so this video, and so we'd talk about it, we'd laugh about it, and it was a way that actually brought us all closer together um, because we were able to laugh about things and it made work a lot more like human, I will say. Um, and you know, I worked with incredibly supportive people. I've surrounded myself at work with people that professionally support me and they personally support me. And uh, it, it was really, it really enabled me to be able to keep going with it and grow with it. Um, but it's been a wild journey and it's been a great old time. Oh, fantastic. You know, I'm so I'm sure that there are so many here in this audience. And I know with your your TikTok um, work besties that are so glad that you went ahead and channeled that creative um, energy into going ahead and making that video, um, you know, as a way to cope with with the pandemic and uh, wonderful to hear that it opened the door for some, um, you know, growth within your own workspace and among your colleagues as well. Um, that is is so awesome. And um, we have some folks wondering, um, what is next as you grow your community? Um, what can they kind of expect from you? Are you looking to look at new topics or where are you looking to bring the uh, Work Besties fam? That is a great question. And, and, you know, sometimes I think about that. I'm like, okay, let's plan for the future. Where are we going to go here? And then I realize that like planning in this life, especially those last few years, most of it's throwaway work because things change so incredibly quickly. So I think for me, it's just about keeping up with where I'm at professionally and where the work besties are at. And that's why it's so important for me to keep engaged with a community because, you know, I might be experiencing something or having something going on in my personal life, but there might be so many other people experiencing a similar thing that's different than mine. And so for me, it's all about that community engagement piece and hearing from the work besties community, making videos about what other people are experiencing too. So bringing their kind of voice and their creativity and, and their experiences into play in my content as well. Um, in terms of what's next big things though, I don't know, I guess we'll see. I'm kind of just rolling with the punches of life. You know, this year is an interesting year of like, things are opening, life's kind of changing and I'm just giving myself the grace to kind of go, go with it and not have any expectations for myself and take care of myself. That's my priority this year. <laughs> That is a great priority. I'm very happy to hear that, especially on our main stage, a great reminder for everyone. Um, and we will certainly stay tuned. We're so excited to see what's next. We do have um, one other question here. I believe we have time for about one more. Um, and that's how, um, how do, does your job, your employer feel about everything that you put on TikTok and Instagram? And how do you separate your career from your social, your career in nine to five um, from your social media career? How do you kind of delineate the two? Yeah. So let's talk about the first piece in that. So I am incredibly mindful in all of my content since the start. When I'm making a video, when I'm naming a character, when I'm making a video about a specific experience, it is never tied directly back to anyone I've ever worked with, any experience we've, we've ever specifically had. Um, and so that creates quite a boundary for me when it comes to creating content because no one I worked with could be like, that video is about me. Like we just had that meeting, you know, and that, and that's, a huge respect thing for me, you know, making content about working world is fun, but you need to keep that element of respect in it too, and try to keep it as professionally as possible. Um, 
And then the second piece there, I have always been very, I've had the ability to compartmentalize things. So my nine to five is my nine to five. I show up, I do a dang good job at it. And then I show up for the social media stuff. And as much as some experiences can overlap, they are pretty different worlds at the end of the day. Um, making content is, you know, a career path in itself. And you need to kind of keep those two separate. And I think that comes back to what I was talking about earlier in my presentation is I never attach identity, self-worth, value to a job. I never get lost in a job. I could change jobs tomorrow and I'm still the same person that I was. Um, and I think that that's really enabled me on this journey to separate social media, work, and myself. We're all three very separate things. We're all integrated to an extent. Um, but at the end of the day, I myself, my content's my content, work is work. I love that. Laura, it has been an absolute pleasure. I absolutely love your responses to all these questions. Loved your presentation. Um, just so appreciate you joining us to talk about all things, um, you know, setting professional boundaries, personal boundaries, effective communication. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. This has been brilliant. Awesome. And I know that our audience will eagerly await your next How Do You Professionally Say. So um, everyone here that is a work bestie online, stay tuned for what uh, Laura has up next. Mm -hmm.